Hello everyone, I'm Rich Lamont. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. Time to do another salmon fly. Uh, today I'm going to do kind of a simple one. This is a blue charm. Uh, it's one that you know a lot of fly tires like. Um, a lot of fly fishermen love to have it in their uh, fly box. It works well. It's a beautiful fly. And um, it's not very complex. doesn't have a whole lot to it. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to put one of these together with a mallard wing. There are several different wings. Uh, there's hair wing versions. Um, I've seen turkey wing versions, but for this one we're going to do a bronze mallard wing. So we're starting with a size one and a half Alec Jackson um, 2051. This is a size one and a half, so it is a little bit larger. Typically you'd see this fly more around like a five. Um, four to eight range. Um, so you can use uh, this hook, you can use Partridge Patriot hooks. Um, I just don't happen to have any uh, Partridge Patriots right now, so um, I have to go with this hook. <clears throat> For the tinsel in the tag, I'm using Silver Twist. Um, normally it's I think it's supposed to be silver oval tinsel, um, but there's a lot of different ways that you can tie this fly, <clears throat> and for me, um, I don't intend to fish this one, so um, I, I'm, I think that uh, I'm going to fancy it up just a little bit. So now we're tying in right here by the uh, eye return. If you look here, that eye return kind of creates a little bit of a step. So we're going to try to eliminate that step a little bit as we tie the fly. Uh, one way to do that is starting your tinsel there. Now I'm tying this in a bit of a low water style. So we're going to not take this back as far as the hook point. We're actually going to start pretty far ahead of the hook point. Now this next step, um, you don't really have to do it. I'm just doing it to, to thicken the body up just a little bit more. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of woolly nylon for some underbody material. I do have a video uh, on woolly nylon and doing underbodies with it. So this, uh, this stuff here piles up pretty quick and works great for making an underbody. See how I'm spreading it out there and getting it to be much wider. And what that'll do is smooth out the body that much more and kind of give you a really nice smooth area to wrap your silk on. Because the, uh, the main part of this fly is um, silk or floss. You could use rayon floss for this. Uh, if you don't have access to silk or you do, all you've got is rayon, you can use that just the same. Especially if it's a fishing fishing version of the of the fly. And we're gonna put just a small drop of Sally Henson's or Super Glue, whichever you prefer. And we'll just put that right up here. I'll just keep that from unraveling. And now for the tinsel, for the tag, I'm going to do three wraps. Between two and three wraps, it's completely up to you.
Now we are going to keep this attached. I'm just going to trim it down a little bit, just a tad long. Alright, so we're going to leave this attached and just tie our thread. up along here right to the front of where we're going to put our uh, tag. The tag is yellow floss and instead of creating a stop right here um, and you can kind of sometimes you'll get that bump in your floss right there to prevent that we'll wrap this all the way up underneath the tag that way that that lump isn't there <clears throat> now the floss that I'm using is um, the Ephemera Silk from Oveil, uh, 54 Dean Street, um, good stuff. It's a little bit thicker than um, Japanese silks, so I've gone ahead already and stripped out and made it a little bit thinner. All I did was separate some of the strands, and by separating the strands... Um, I've just made it a little bit easier to work with and it won't pile up quite so much. So what we'll do now is tie in. And then we're going to wrap this We'll wrap it back to the tinsel. When you're working with silk, even rayon, um, it can be rather delicate. So you want to make sure that your hands are one clean, but two also free of any rough spots around your fingers and um, any burrs or anything like that, because that can fray the the floss very very easily. Also as a tip, if you're tying this for fishing, um, you'll probably want to start with white thread. Black thread, when silk gets wet, uh, the black thread will have a tendency to show through and kind of ruins the color of that silk. Now we're leaving the tinsel attached. That is going to be our ribbing for the body. Make sure you don't cut that out. I'm going to leave that down below. And now we're going to create a little bit of a platform, if you will, for the tail to mount on. If you don't have that, your tail will wind up. Um, either popping up or it just it, it won't sit quite right. Uh, also if you don't feel like your tip and tag are quite smooth enough you can always burnish it out. A burnishing tool. This is just a, a negate burnisher. Alright for the tail let me go into my golden pheasant crest here and <clears throat> kind of just looking for one that's relatively straight that's got a 
good curve to it, but something that's not too long. And I've got these kind of right here in the front. Um, most of these right here, you can see, they're not very curved. They're, you know, they're not too wavy. Um, any of these would be actually pretty acceptable for tails. So, let's take, um, I think this one will be too small. Yeah, that's a little too small. Like this one here. I like that one. Okay. I'm going to go with this one. And we'll tie it in about there. So, what we'll do then is take and cut right here. I'm going to cut just these little fuzzy stuff on the side. You don't want to cut and pluck those off too much. I used to strip them, but I found that cutting them and leaving a little bit of the um, stuff on the rackets there will actually help with... Um, that'll help your thread have something to bite onto. It'll also help prevent the tail from rolling. And Now this doesn't sit quite the way I want it to. So I'll just take my thumb and manipulate the stem a little bit right here. After it's tied in, it should drop down a little bit like that. Also, when you tie your tail in, you don't have to tie it in uh, tight. You don't have to draw that down, and that's just not necessary. You try drawing it and tighten it down too much, and your tail won't cooperate with you. A lot of materials are that way. You don't need to have it super tight. Looks good. And the rest of the body is going to be black floss. But from building up the tail here, I've got quite the transition right there. So I'm trying to just remove a little bit of that and thicken up the body just a hair more. Which I might actually just do with a little bit of extra underbody material. If done right, you should only have to apply just a little bit of this. But also, you want to keep in mind that you do want to have a body taper that gets narrower towards the front of the fly. You don't want to have a body taper that gets thicker towards the front of the fly. Nope. Usually pin that back out of the way. I'm 
And a lot of your fishing flies, this won't be necessary. Smaller flies, this isn't so much of an issue. just a little bit thicker and we can just kind of skip to the front and we'll tie in our black floss which I'm using black Japanese silk so it's uh, very very delicate um, pretty fine stuff so what I'm going to do first is tie it in and Hopefully, um, hopefully my hands aren't too rough and I don't beat it up too bad. I don't have my gloves out at the moment. I might have to get them though. We'll see. All right. So, and start wrapping back. I'm going to wrap nice, neat, even wraps uh, that are all touching. If you've got high spots or low spots in the body, you can overlap them. And I'll kind of take that those highs and low spots out. Or if you got spots that you want to thicken up, you can overlap it. That'll do that as well. Feeling a rough spot in the floss. Once that's tied off, you can go ahead and snip off the excess. And then you can take out your burnishing tool, smooth that out a little bit. This will just help settle any of them fibers that are creating highs and low spots. Again, on fishing versions, not necessary. Fish won't really care too much about the smoothness of the floss. And then tinsel. I'm going to just wrap this at an angle, which 
if you hold it at the right angle consistently as you wrap it should give you nice even spacing I would like to tie it off underneath the hook shank instead of above it. There we go. Now between, you know, two and five wraps. Or I'm sorry, two and five wraps. I was looking at my phone. Between five and seven wraps is pretty standard for salmon fly tinsel ribbon so I figure if I wrap my I'll probably wrap back from here a little bit for my hackle and then I'll have five that are showing consistently and then the sixth one probably won't show very well <clears throat> for the hackle I'm actually going to use slap and hackle for this uh, I want it to be a little bit webbier um, but the other thing is, you'll see a lot of people, they'll tie in from the underside of the hook. That is, uh, they call that false hackling. Uh, I like to wrap my hackle around the hook shank rather than from underneath. So I'm going to use some uh, blue schlap and hackle. It's a little webbier. This one's closer to a saddle hackle, uh, this feather here. Um, but it's a little bit webbier. And you know, give me these nice longer fibers towards the towards the end, but I'd really like to have my hackle reach about the end of the black part of the body. So I'm going to strip off some of these hackle pieces from up from up top here. And we tie in from the tip of the fly rather than from the base. Um, I know like dry fly, dry fly guys, you tie in from the base. But from here we're gonna tie in at the tip. And fold that back. And we'll clip that tip off. and then we'll palmer the hackle as we wrap it. So just fold it back as we wrap. actually going to go for the fifth wrap. Um, it's going to make it a bit on the thick side, but I'm okay with that. I kind of want it to be a little thick. And then we'll just pluck away a few barbs there for the tie off.
now you can pull this down, kind of part it up top, and you can pull that down. And after you pull that down, back wrap over it a little bit. And you back wrap over that. You'll have some that'll want to stick up, some that'll be kind of a pain towards the middle here. Those you can you can pluck those away. Don't pluck too many, otherwise it'll show. But those are unruly ones that kind of become a pain in the butt as you're trying to do everything else. Come on now. We'll just get rid of those. Okay. Now we're going to build up a little bit of a base for our wing to sit on. And get that nice characteristic blue charm throat. Now for the wing we're going to do bronze mallard. But first I like to use a little bit of turkey. Um, this is just to stiffen up uh, the underside, kind of as a wing support, so to speak. <coughs> Pardon me. Doesn't have to be very much. Maybe uh, six, eight slips of, uh, of turkey tail. Too many there. Some call it cheating, but hey, whatever works, right? So now I like to, I'll tie this in um, about up to where the tag is, almost even with the hook point, enough that it doesn't get into the bend of the tail. And that's just a loose wrap. And then a couple others. This doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be fancy. It just has to be there. It just has to help support that, that mallard wing so it doesn't collapse when you tie it in. Now we'll take our bronze mallard feathers. We'll take the left feather, which will go for the near side, and we're going to go right here on the stem where the fuzzy stuff ends. Um, you'll notice some of this is kind of long and starting to get brown. I like to go just a little bit above that, just so I know that I've got a decent amount of um, Velcro between the feathers, so to speak. And then we'll just clip that away. And on the back, this uh, shorter stuff, we'll just strip that. Now measure out how big of a wing we want. I mean, that's plenty big. I think that would look rather nice. I don't know if I can get it that big, but I might try. So, we will, actually I'm going to go a little bit smaller than that, but cut that out. And then we're going to go back up, take that section we just cut out, lay it right up next to the slip above it, 
and do it again. Because we're going to need two for each side. Alright, so. Now we've got both of our slips. Left and right. Uh, I, I like to see the underside, the second one, the one on the inside that you're not going to see. That one can be a little bit thinner. Um, that way it's not fighting you so much with the uh, larger one on the outside. Sometimes they, if they're the same size, then the inner one might slip a little bit more and that can um, wind up sliding out on you. So we're just going to go with just a little bit shorter, a little smaller of a slip on the inside. I'm just getting the opposite side prepped. I already showed you the one side, so bear with me while I get this other one done. All right. <clears throat> now we're going to take them, take each one, all four of them, two lefts, two rights, and you're going to hold the stem and then straighten them out. Hold the stem and pull them straight out. That'll help get them nice and straight and ready for the wing. They'll stay together much better that way. So now I'm going to do that with all four. Same thing on the other side. Here's one here. Now the next step is a bit, there's a lot of different ways that this can go. You can tie them in one at a time. You can tie them in right side, left side at a time. Or you can do them both at the same time, all four pieces. That's what I'm going to shoot for here. I find that works the easiest. Um, I especially find it where it's easiest when I'm, when I'm on days when I'm having trouble. And, um, well, I've done this video a few times already, so going with my trouble free method. Okay, so we'll put it up against, almost right up against the side of the hook shank here, and hold that in place. And we'll get the front side and put it right up against that and then we can get them into position here above the hook now you can position them where you'd like them the curvature of that wing lining up with the curvature of the tail once you've got that lined up then you want to make sure that Something's not right because this one is way too too long out here. There we go. All right, so let's get the rest of this back into shape. And now, when you go to tie this in here, you want to make sure the front ones are in the front, back ones are in the back, and keep them on their respective side of the eye of the hook. That'll matter when you go to tie them in. And then when you go to tie them in, just loop it over once and let the bobbin hang. Then you can grab these and kind of help that thread down a little bit. Wiggle these around a little, keeping your left hand as still as possible. Then make a second wrap. Again, let the bobbin didn't put the tension on it. Use your fingers to position those correctly, right there. Three times. I'm going to go four, five. And then I'm going to let go 
and see how it's shaped. And as you can see, the one side here in the front collapsed on me. And I can see why. A few pieces out of place. No big worry. But now because that collapsed in that one spot, it's very likely that'll collapse in that spot again. So it's important to take that feather out and work that back out of it. And make sure that it's nice and straight again before trying to tie it back in. Otherwise, you might wind up with a collapse right in the same exact spot. And we'll try this just one more time. Leave the tension on the bobbin. Make your adjustments. Of course, now the back side collapsed just a hair. Let me see if I can work that out without taking this down completely. Careful. All right, I'm going to add a small drop of Sally Henson's here. Give that a minute to soak in and dry. In the meantime, we can take our tail and I'm going to break the back on it just a little bit. And that's just going to straighten it out a little bit more. There we go. I don't like the way the wing is twisted though. That's better. 
likely a curl in the feathers. The way the feathers curl, sometimes one is stronger than the other. One feather had more of a curve to it. I'm actually going to leave the throat like that. I like that up around the sides. Okay, that's had a bit of a moment here to dry. Just hold your wing nice and tight and make sure that Make sure you've got some nice sharp scissors or a razor. And then just go ahead and finish up the head. A hook finish on it and then I'm going to do first a coat of clear Salire from Venaird. Um, the reason I'm going to do clear first is I've had uh, some trouble in the past with the black leaching into my feathers and my throats and I was told that uh, doing a coat of clear first let that soak in. Uh, that's the best way to go about it and then go ahead with your coat of black. So I'll do the uh, the black salire later on. Um, but uh, this here, as you can see, is the completed blue charm salmon fly. So if you guys like this video Give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, think about subscribing. That helps me out. It helps me know that you guys enjoy the content, you enjoy what I'm doing, and that um, you know I'm, I'm doing a good job. Uh, also, for those of you that um, have already subscribed and are aware of it, the giveaway is tonight at 7 p.m. So I will be doing that live at 7 p.m. Eastern. So uh, I will see you guys there. And then my next video will be out um, hopefully in just a few days. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Have yourselves a wonderful afternoon, and I will see you tonight. Take care.